at Random TV Reviews, your girl Lynette. And it's your boy, Stan Lat. And before you do your god darn intro, as far as the YouTube thing, I want to apologize for having on a wrinkled shirt <laughs> last week. It was a whole lot going on before we had to get on the camera. And I didn't even realize that my shirt was that wrinkled. Was Should it for this one or was it for power? It, it was power. Uh, no, it was the last one. I don't care power. which one it was. <laughs> the guy D shirt was wrinkled. So I apologize, but your boy shirt look it should be straight tonight, though. What what we tell y'all? My family, right? <laughs> if you stop by my house on any given moment, my hair, my my wig might be a little twisted. Yeah. You know, it, things happen. But it's Bring all shirt, good. He good. Yeah, it's all good. So let's do the YouTube thing. If you're not a family member, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Yeah. It's free ninety nine. Go ahead and rate the video. Thumbs up, thumbs down. At this point, it doesn't even matter. You're already here. So, Queen Sugar. Here beside the river. It didn't really give me much, but I can appreciate the fact that it seemed like we actually got some emotion from a whole lot of the characters. Yeah. I did get never pissed off before. a few times, though. A few times. Yeah. We gonna talk about it. We gonna talk yeah. about it. Let's okay. do it. As Mike B would say, we're gonna group some things together. Some things we may not. Some things we may not talk about because they'll be important at a later date. Okay, so we have Nova. Nova is doing um, kind of like a speech. Um, how do you? Uh, speech slash storyteller. But it was very fictional, in yeah. my opinion. Like she, she's a great storyteller. Yeah. She told the story as if she were there, and at the end, I was like, that ain't. I will how? Okay, whatever. Yeah. But she's captivating the audience and doing, you know, doing what only Nova can do. Mm -hmm. We got Remy in the audience. You know, he's basically cheering her on, giving the goo goo eyes like, that's my boo. She do her yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. I thought at one point I saw Charlie peep her head in there. Was that? Nah, she was peeping her head in there prosper. Okay. Yeah. The head and them scenes too got doing close together. I was like, yeah. why? Did she see Remy and didn't go in? Nah. She okay, was, so she, she won't be there. prosper because she knows something was going on with him. Okay. So, I advise over there. She's doing her pie thing, and the girl that always helps Aunt Vi out, she was like, oh my God, did you hear about the piece that Nova did about your brother Ernest? And Vi was like, like, uh, no. Didn't stand to tell y'all mm -hmm. that if she's going to write something about <laughs> about Ernest and, you know, his bout with suicide, you need, you to, need tell to tell them. the family. Yeah. You need to prepare them for something like this. Because exactly. certainly when you deal with people of that age, mm -hmm. what goes on in this family stays in this everything family. Is, everything is up underneath the rug. And it's still up underneath the rug. Yeah. So Vi gets a copy of it from the assistant because she messed the boots. She'd have brought a copy of it. <laughs> so Vi reads it and she immediately gets pissed off. Mm -hmm. She goes, well, I don't know. Did Vi? Nah, no, no, one, no, no one, one came, came to, to see, see her. Vi. Yeah. And she was like, okay, shouldn't you have told us Anything about you going to go? I can't talk tonight. Shouldn't you have told us that you were going to air out my brother's dirty laundry for all of the world to hear? Hmm. And she was like, "Well, I buy you told me to go ahead and tell, tell my, my truth. truth." She said, "No, no, no. I told you to tell your truth. That's my brother's truth. So no, you shouldn't have went out there and said nothing. I got to deal with people saying this about the border loans, that about the border loans, and now we got to deal with something like this. And I'm sitting here like." Here we go. I get your point. I'm yeah, not. you got a good point that she should have came to you, but she still did a good thing. Yeah. And Cause she's, oh, oh, go ahead. Because she said she got great feedback on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. And you know, that's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> Let me stop. People getting, people getting set free and getting healed, but I don't vibe, I didn't care. Nothing about that. Well, she said, she, well, what about us? Yeah, what about us? What you, about you the You got my brother out there looking like he all weak. And I said, okay, here so we here go. Here we go. So I basically told Nova says, you ain't right, child. Something about you ain't right. Your life ain't right and your soul ain't right. You need to go find yourself. Go find yourself. <laughs> I said, okay. So now we got... Y'all want to talk about that next? No. Okay. So Hollywood. Hollywood has been kind of off this whole episode. And I'm like... Let's say what's going on. What's going on with what's old What's going Hollywood? on, Holly? You know... Have everything that I've done to him, has it finally caught up? Mm -hmm. You know, the pushing off, you don't want my last name thing? No, but what had happened was, he came in the house and he decided he wanted to go straight to bed. I, I, you know, she notices, but at the same time, she's over there brewing. 
because of what she just had, you know, the incident she had with Nova. And she wants to talk about that. Forget your feelings. Buck your feelings right now. Uh -huh. I want to talk about what's going on with Nova and how dare she talk about this, talk about that. And she, she wrote a piece. And then Hollywood said, I, I read it already. My mama sent me a copy of uh -huh. it. <laughs> I said, well, God, don't. Everybody, don't <laughs> Everybody got, a got it. This. That was quick. And he sat down and she was like, so you agree with what she said? He was like, I'm not here to disagree or agree with it. But what I can tell you is. We just got different perspectives. He said, I can tell you about the weight that falls on a black man and how sometimes you feel like you just can't bear it. Mm -hmm. And he went ahead and told her basically why he's been kind of off this entire episode was because 11 years ago, around this time, mm -hmm. Leanne had that miscarriage. The baby was 18 weeks. She was only 18 weeks. And from what I heard, it was a little girl. So he was like that. I would have an 11 year old right about now. Mm -hmm. And he said, some years I can get past it. And some years I don't even know how mm -hmm. I'm going to move on from it. Yeah. So he was able to show her that where your father was, I mean, your brother was, I have been there too. I may not yeah. have had a gun to my head or, mm -hmm. or toting a gun through a field, but I have felt the pressure of being a man with a whole bunch of skin on mm -hmm. you. And you don't know what to do with that. Yeah. So I think that really helped her kind of come from out of that judgmental, you know, leave legacy alone kind of thing. Yeah. So, I mean, we hope. But, che but check this out. I mean, this is powerful right here, too, that he's still dealing with the pain of a trauma that happened 11 years ago. And one thing I know about the bros is that we don't let ourselves feel pain. So that's why 11 years later, we still struggling because we never let ourselves feel that pain or go through that process of healing. Because in society, for a man to hurt, for a man to cry, it's a sign of weakness. But nah, uh-uh. That skit is killing us, man. It's giving mm -hmm. us high blood pressure. It's giving us heart attacks. It's calling us to, to beat on our women. It's doing a whole lot of bull skit that's destructive mm -hmm. because we won't deal with it. So we got to let our ego go, let our pride go, and get healed, brothers. Yeah. Get healed, man. And that ain't just for the men either. I'm just speaking to the men. You can speak well, to the women. Well, I can speak to the women. Cause yeah, I, go on, speak to them. Because we had an incident yesterday, and I told uh -huh. Stanley in the car. For a lot of you all that don't know, and I didn't really want to share it, but it seemed like it's just coming up. Mm -hmm. So I'll share it just because it feels like it's coming up. Um, we buried my stepmother on yesterday. And my entire family came yesterday, you know, you know supporting, you know, rallying around everybody. Because we're just one big happy family. Yeah. So... All of a sudden, there was a chain reaction of my aunts just boo-hoo crying. One after the other, one of the out, And then my mama. Yeah. And I'm sitting here like, what the hell is going on? I know everybody loved her, but this, but this ain't even about like, her. Yeah, it wasn't even, yeah. I told Stanley in the car, I said, that wasn't about her. That was about my uncle that been dead for three years. That was about mm -hmm. my grandfather, because they really, truly have never grieved it. Mm -hmm. they, they had their moment, and they just basically moved on. Yeah. I said, so when they had a moment of vulnerability sitting up in that church on yesterday, yeah. them things went, I mean, you would have thought that I was in that casket yesterday, the way they carried on behind me. You hear yeah. me? And I'm sitting here like, I know everybody was like, what the hell is wrong? What's, <laughs> What's going on with Stanley him? looked at me like, and I'm like, and of course, that was getting ready to get me carried on. And my niece, <laughs> my niece already had me messed up. I was like, okay. But I'm like, we got to deal with our skit too. Yeah. You just can't put on that happy face, that strong face, that sharp mm -hmm. facade. Because that stuff will come to roost. Yeah. So it go like that was on um, Nova Sign at the beginning of the thing. was said something to the, to the fact of at night we bleed and slow. Um, I'm probably saying it wrong, but I, 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 I got the gist of it. So pretty much in the silence. We suffer and die. All right, so keep it right along with um, finding yourself. Nova asked Remy, uh, if I had the nerve to tell me to go find myself, so what does that even mean? <laughs> and he was basically like, mm, it's, it's a parable, but um, parallel? Parable. Parable. Parable, yeah. So, I'm tired as heck, y'all. So, <laughs> he was like, yeah, you know, around the time that Shauna died and all that good stuff, you know, I was told that I needed to sell my house, do this, do that, and, you know, find myself as well. They finally came to the conclusion that we like each other and we feel in each other, but the basis of us being together is built on pain. pain. Yep. So both of them, I guess they agreed that we're going to go ahead and leave well enough alone. 
And I'm glad because I don't yeah. even know why we even brought this up. Yeah, that should never even happen in the first place. It just came from out of nowhere. Like yeah. a lot of people have pointed this out too, which I thought it. I just didn't say it. When did Remy become this rebel that smokes weed that's so non-judgmental? Yeah. All of a sudden, like just changed. They just dropped another person into the character of Remy because that wasn't a Remy that we knew. But you know, some of us sometimes change when we have to, when, if somebody we want to get into their life, we'll change to be like them, to be accepted by them sometimes. Fake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now we got um, DCFS coming over there to Ralph Angel house, questioning him about his parenting. Well, it's actually not questioning him, questioning, questioning Blue, Blue. Yeah. about, you know, what do you eat? Do your father usually wake you up or do you ever have to wake him up? And Ralph Andrew gets besides himself and that anger that he has on the inside of him would not let it rest. Mm -hmm. And he was like, what y'all going to tell me is who called and questioning my parenting. Of course, we all sat here and thought that it was Dollar. I yeah, thought it was, I thought it was her because I initially got pissed off and said, here she go with this bullshit again. So as soon as they left, because of course they brought the sheriff with them. Y'all know that's pretty much protocol. Mm -hmm. And he calls Dollar. Dollar was like, I would never do anything like that. And I'm like, well, at this point, we really can't believe you because we never yeah. would think that you would, <laughs> you would try well, to get to home 70, 30. Dirt, exactly. But, okay, you did. whatever. Well, looky, looky to our surprise. It wasn't Dollar. It's Dollar's mama. Exactly. Dollar mama though now, she feels like that they can be a better fit for Blue. I told y'all last week. Uh-huh. Take Blue and go to God doing DC. Go eat some Georgetown cupcakes. Table of bomb. Or whatever else you eat. And get you some crabs in your life. Exactly. And just, yeah. and as James would say, He'll come back. Yep. He'll come back. He'll home. bring them back after they find out they can't do it. Yeah, and and that he really wants to be at home with his dad. But yeah, send him on over there. Yep. So Aunt Vi got win. Well, first, Dollar came home and they were at her house, and you can tell that she wasn't with what her mama was bringing. Mm-hmm. But I was like, but at the same time, which was you, going on? You did it. You did that. You brought the information back to her, talking about all this stuff about Ralph Angel. And she decided to call Child Protective Service. So, so on Vi, I don't remember how she found out. Doesn't even matter at this point. But on Vi went and showed um, Diane, that's her name right, Diane, a visit. Yeah. And basically said, you know what? Now you want to be this doting grandmother. Mm -hmm. Other than just mailing some checks to make sure that we raise him. Yeah. Okay, now that your daughter seems to be on the up and up. Let's, let me remind you that your daughter was the same one that was running around town smoking everything she could and sleeping with everything that she could <laughs> while we raised this boy. Yep. This boy is a borderline. And your daughter ain't half a of a daggone parent as Ralph Angel. That boy busts his butt every day. had to do to take care of that boy. Yep. Then Dollar Mama was talking about somewhere. We may not even be sure that he really is Ralph Angel's child. Mm. I said, I'm fine. Don't, 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 don't spill the beans. Don't spill don't, the beans. Don't do it. She said, you know what? Blood or no blood, that boy is a borderline. Yep. And we take care of him. We've raised him. Yep. Basically, don't think, it stays here. And don't think we ain't let this go without no fight. I said, well, wait a minute, Diane. They just go ahead to work this kid out. But yeah, she brought up a good point. What was y'all ninjas at when we was taking care of when Dollar was doing her skit? Yeah, that would been the time that you should have called and tried to get the boy back. But no. Nope. You just want to send checks. Yep. And that's what I've been saying the whole time. Now, I get it. I get it. You can't say that, you know, time has passed and they need to leave it alone. And we but y'all were cool. Y'all were cool enough to send checks. Look, we can't forget that they was the one that started the fire between Dollar and freaking Ralph Angel by telling her that you need to tell him the, the truth. truth. She told him the truth. Ralph Angel don't want to marry her. Now she come back telling y'all some blue skit about Ralph Angel. Now y'all want blue back. Yeah, talking about some. He hires criminals. And yeah. I said, what? For real, for real, if you really look at that, that's a good thing. When yeah. you think about the fact that these guys wouldn't be able to get jobs. And his parole officer suggested this. Exactly. He has guys in the house drinking. That was that well, one, one time. One time. One time. And I agree. That was buffed up. And it yeah. was the one time that Dollar had to see some mess like that. Mm -hmm. But it was handled. 
I'm sitting here like, you're talking about he working all these jobs being passed from house to house. I know that you grew up real uppity and wasn't that, but yeah, that's how I, that's how it was. It takes a village to raise a child. If 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 your mama got two three jobs, mm -hmm. grandma had you, exactly. and then when she go to bed at eight o'clock, your auntie pick you up, take over the, take you over the house, exactly, and you stay over there. D, get on the bus from your from your aunt's house. You might get off the bus at your mom's house at some point. Exactly. But all it was to take care of your home parts, to make sure that you have food on the table, clothes on your back, and what I need to say, a roof over your head. I was done. When that, yeah. And then when they went over there to talk to Dollar, I said, well, why didn't we hear what they had to ask Dollar? That just kind of cut off. Yeah. And, and then Dollar told her mama, said, so are we going to have an interview between me and her? Or just me. So basically, Dollar even put her own mama. I was like, listen, if I'm going to talk to these people, I need to talk to them alone. Without you interrupting and prepping the whole guy doing interview process. Hmm. So, I don't know. Take Blue, go to D.C. That's all I got to say about yeah. it. Um, police that went over to Ant House. Because y'all know that that book bag caught on fire. Mm -hmm. And it was stuff in there that could identify who, to belong, who it belonged to. Mm -hmm. So they questioned Ant. Couldn't find them at the moment. But at school, they caught up to Ant and they arrested him. All five of them were like deer here, like, boy, when them cops were coming down there, oh, they was like, oh, skit. And we going thing. to jail. This is the thing. We always, we, we've been saying it from the jump. These boys are going to be trouble because mm -hmm. they do not have, no one's really mentoring how to, you know, how to do this thing correctly to keep yeah. your butt out of trouble. What scares me about Ant is he's already angry because he feels like the system took his brother away from him. Yeah. But yet you've done something in the name of being woke, you know, feeling like you're doing a good thing. Now and you now you're, you're, you're going to be locked up, up with your brother, your brother too. Yep. And then your mama going to have to deal with it. That's the first thing he said when he got locked up. Hey, call my mama. You know yep. that's what black that's guys what I always do. say. Yeah, call tell my mama. mama. <laughs> tell my mama I love her. I'll see you in court. So, Kiki comes out because Kiki came over to um, Michael's house later on after school. And she was like, do you know anything about this? And I thought he was going to lie. He said, mm, yeah. We all were there. We've been planning this for a couple of weeks. She was like, like what? what? So, when you were too busy to hang out with me, that's what you were doing? He was like, it ain't like you can make time for me. You always busy. You know, she said, I am studying I'm for my, my SATs. SAT. So, that I can get a full ride to college. Yeah, I'm trying to get my keep my skit together. She said, I don't even know who you are. You so woke now. Uh -huh. But you laying up here committing crimes. Yeah. That's not the way to do it. He told her, but since you don't seem to be doing, doing nothing. nothing. She said, you know what? I'm gone. I'm gone. I don't I'm even out. know who you are anymore. <laughs> and he was like, well, who am I? She just looked at him and said, like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so, we know it, it's going to be a matter of time before Micah gets caught up to Mr. Prosper. Y'all going to stop messing with Mr. Prosper. Because Charlie had peeked in on him. And he was having a hard time getting out the bed. Later on that day, he called Charlie. Good thing he had his cell phone on him. When he went to yeah. go get in the shower, he slipped and he fell. So she came home and, you know, she took him to the hospitals to have him um, checked out. They did x-rays. And they let Charlie know, you know that he canceled his surgery, right? I won't surprise. No, me either. Nah, could yeah. So she confronted him about it. And he was like, because at first she was like, yeah, a, pride man, a proud man don't want you to know when now, you know. Something about a proud man, and then the nurse, which is her friend, said, and afraid. And He's afraid. afraid. Uh huh. So he went ahead and told him, he said, You know what? You know, old girl at the church, her husband went into this surgery last year. People my age go on the table, but they don't make it back out, Charlie. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he's really afraid. Yeah. From and that one bad seed. Yeah. But you remember yeah. when my stepdad, before he died, my mm -hmm. stepdad was really, really obese. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to have the, um, the um, bariatric surgery. And we took him up there to have that surgery. And the doctor, I wouldn't have let him touch him. I wouldn't, either. yeah, because he gave him all bad news. No good news, all bad. He said, Well, Mr. Such and Such, there's a good chance that you're going to die on the table. Mm -hmm. Your heart is going to stop. Yep. You know, we will do everything we can to um, to bring you back to life, you know, to resuscitate you. But there isn't any chance that you will. That's a small, very small chance. So from that, that point you, on, that you, yeah. like you said, the seed was there. 
He no know. matter what nobody else told him and no matter what any other doctor told him, mm -hmm. they were like, we can do the sleeve. It's, it's, you know, it's safer for someone your size, you know, then when you get, you know, you can work the rest of it. Yeah. That one seed, done. If we have any doctors on here, and I know y'all got the, he, he had to give him the real. But you gotta I, have yeah. some bedside balance But you gotta have, some, yeah, you gotta have some balance to that to give him some success stories. Like, but I've had some people your size that have survived. And this is them, this person went through this, this person that, to give him some hope. But he just tore his world down. We all were looking at each other like. I was like, I wouldn't, mm, don't I do like, it. I was like, don't. Even if he had said yes, I think us as a family would have said I would say no. Because no. he him going in there with that attitude, mm -hmm. I'm thinking that he ain't even gonna try to do the best job possible to get him through the surgery. Mm -hmm. I think he just going well, if he big anyway, she might well gonna let him go. Yeah. He got yeah. insurance, cool. Yep. That's how I felt about him. That's how he presented it. I was like, oh my god. Yeah. So yeah, if you get somebody some bad advice and plant a bad seed, you never know how far. Like what happened to me at the barber shop? But that's oh all. <laughs> my god. <laughs> we tell y'all that another day. <laughs> just I can't know either. just know somebody sold a bad seed in my head about salamanders. And I've been looking for them ever since. But And we have never the seen else. a freaking salamander yeah. around here. Yeah. He but, acting all crazy, tell me something like that. Close the goddamn door for a salamander. Have you ever seen a salamander in this goddamn? I've never seen a salamander in my life. But now all of a sudden we gotta close doors real quick because the salamander <laughs> might get because somebody at the barber shop told him that a salamander gave, came and got in their house. That they keep coming in his house. Because he leave the door open. That that's just paranoia. <laughs> that's what that is. <laughs> but anyway. So um what else happened? Oh, what's the um the trans cop's name? I can't think of his name. Twan? Twan. Twan. Yeah, Twan. Yeah, I think it's Twan, yeah. Because Ralph Angel had to go down to the police department after this whole um, D, um, CFS stuff. He was like, you know, I want to talk to my probation officer, my parole officer, because, of course, my background is going to be looked into, da 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 Well, he got this old nasty woman yeah. that basically was like, mm, 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 that okay, it, okay that have it. a good day. So, Twan was able to talk to Ralph Angel and told Ralph Angel, say, listen, you have anger issues. I have anger issues, but you already know that stereotypically we're already looked at as very aggressive, this, that, and the third. So basically we've all made mistakes, but if you don't get your skit uh -huh. under control and own it, yeah. own your mistakes, forgive yourself and move on, get healed. it's going to ruin your life. Yep. And, mm -hmm. and cause you to possibly increase your chance of losing that boy. Yeah. So Blue gets home with Ralph Angel and he starts asking the questions that he should be asking because why it was his... Why were the cops here? I, I would have asked yeah. that too. And why did you yell? And you know, why were you in prison? And you know, what is this? What's the record? What's the record? So for one, Ralph Angel was really transparent. He was like, I got mm. a record. I did some really, really bad things. I was in prison. He was like, prison's for bad people. Are you a bad, bad person, Pop? He was like, I did yeah. some really bad, bad things. things. I'm trying to be better with my life. You know, all that mm -hmm. stuff that it, but I said, this was a, actually a very good moment. He was still mumbling. Mm -hmm. We could barely understand him, but he had a transparent moment with Blue mm -hmm. and basically let him know that a record means that you have consequences. When someone tells you not to do something and you, you do, do it, it anyway. you, there is an offense that, you know, you have to take account for. But, and that's what it was. But that was real powerful that that brother, he knew that brother's story. And know he was put him as a loose cannon and told him that he, like you say, need to check yourself. And it caused him to go home and be transparent with Blue. Yeah. So that's the power of telling your story. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What else <laughs> happened? I don't think anything else really happened. Other oh, this is oh. the best part. <laughs> so Charlie goes over there to talk to Colton. Yeah. Colton owns 10% oh, yeah. of Landry Enterprises. Well, you know, his 10% in the state mm -hmm. of the company. And she wants all 10% of it. Nah, yeah. Colton walked into that meeting real smug, real sure of himself that <laughs> I'm just giving you a little Give bit of my time. Minutes. Yeah. But whatever you got on me, huh, you're going to walk out of here defeated. And I'm going to go on and carry on about my day. She said, not so fast. <laughs> she said, I'm really more in, in tune with um 
such and such and such and such. He was like, huh, come again? She said, I know you've been cleaning dirty money. Money laundering. And money laundering like Dre and Ghosh and all them do on yeah, power. Uh -huh. I know all about that. So either you disappoint your father mm -hmm. or you take down your uncle. Your choice. Yeah, your choice. Or you're going to have the FBI, all, APD, all them up in your business. So Nick said, we know he was signing over his 10% <laughs> over to Charlie because he didn't want to go to no jail for no goddamn money laundering. Nope. So I said, okay, so for one episode, I feel like Charlie wasn't defeated. Yeah, she Although, actually won a battle this time, man. It's been a while. She been she done won some in past episodes, but she hadn't won one in a while. So yeah, this is a good victory right here for her. It is, but she's still dealing with skin, because now she's sitting up in the hospital with Prosper. With Prosper. Mm -hmm. God don't. But where Davis West at, y'all? He, don't, he just a fella. No, he taking care of the 12 year old girl that he just came into his life. And then you got a son over here burning down freaking um, buildings and stuff. Mm hmm. And he, did y'all see when he put the guy doing shoes in his closet? Yeah, throw them shoes somewhere in the dumpster behind a convenience store or something. Really, Mike? Come on now, burn them up or something. He tried to clean them. Then when they wouldn't get clean, he just put them in a yeah, bag. Yeah, throw the evidence so the cops come over them, go in the closet and get them, get them shoes right on out there. Man, I man, didn't look man. at their uh, preview for next week, so I can imagine that Michael next. But this pretty much, it's not that's not Michael. He he just acting out because of because of what's going through with his dad and mom. He yeah, acting he's out. trying to find himself too. He's yeah. He's finally in public school. He's in a whole nother city. He doesn't really know who he is. Of course, he's a teenager. Mm -hmm. And he wants to be woke. Who doesn't want to be woke? But at the same time, you cannot. You gotta go be about woke it and wise. Right. No, you gotta do it the right way. Yeah, you gotta way. be woke and wise. And then you can't be one of those people because they scare me. People yeah. that's that's all they do. They so woke. They so woke. And I'm just like, go to sleep. Please <laughs> go to sleep because you were scaring me now. Yeah. You y'all know some people like that. Straight from the VA. Dirty dirty south. Two up, two down. Holla. <laughs>